Hi everybody, welcome to another video in Calculus 1, section 5.1, approximating area under the curve. So uh, we start with section 4.9 where we learn about indefinite integral and then we start a new chapter. Right. Uh, in section 5.3 we will connect everything together but in this section 5.1 and 5.2 we study about uh, area under the curves. Uh, suppose the velocity of an object given by t square uh, from t equal to 0 to 8 and uh, it is in second yes so from 0 to 8 second approximate the displacement or the distance travel of the object by dividing the interval into n sub interval of equal length on each sub interval approximate the velocity of constant equal to the values at the midpoint of the sub-interval. Right, so this is how we... Background, this is how we start with the most fundamental relation uh, is that velocity or speed because it is positive, so it's, we not worry about negative velocity. So velocity is equal to displacement over time. Because of that, or we, the simple version, speed is equal to distance over time, right? Speed equal to distance over time. Uh, so if we solve for, uh, we have displacement is equal to velocity times time. Think about this. If I go at uh, velocity of 60 miles per hour for two hours, then the distance uh, is going to be, let's say S is the distance or displacement. It's going to be 60 miles per hour. times two hours because that would be 120 miles right so distance equal speed times time now the problem is in this case the velocity or the speed is not a constant it is a function that change over time so if the speed is not constant then how do we do that uh, to find exact uh, displacement that will be later on in the chapter but for now we just approximate so Let's say we are given v of t equal to t square. Let's say we go from t equal to uh, middle of a second. So it is in a second. We divide that 0 to 8 into 2 sub interval. 0 to 4 second and from 4 to 8 second. Right? From 0 to 2, we will take the midpoint, which is 2. And the speed at 2 second it's going to be v of t is equal to t square. So the speed at 2 seconds, put 2 in for t, and it's going to be equal to 2 square, which is 4. So we assume that even though the velocity will change from 0 to 4 seconds, we assume that from 0 to 4 seconds, the constant velocity, constant velocity will be equal to 4. Yeah, we we'll just take the midpoint, find the velocity, and we assume that all the velocity will be equal to at the midpoint. And then so, if it's the constant velocity times time, 4 meter per second times 4 seconds, so this will be 16. So from here to there, uh, the object travels 16 meters. Right? So, 4 times 4, so 4 meter per second. That is the average velocity of that interval times from 0 to 4, that is 4 seconds. So that gives us 16 meters. So from 0 to 4, we travel 16 meters. Next, from 4 to 8, we will take the midpoint of 4 and 8, which is 6, and we find the velocity at 6 seconds. Velocity 
is the function is t square, so it's going to be six square, which is thirty six. So we assume that from four second to eight second, the object the object travel as constant speed of thirty six meter per second. So from four to eight, we have thirty six meter per second times four second of the time elapsed from four to eight second. So four times thirty six is one hundred forty four. meter so in in total from 0 to 8 second the object will travel the object we travel 16 meter plus 144 is 160 meter so approximately the distance travel is 160 meters so for here approximately displacement is equal to 100 60 if we divide into two sub interval right next we do the same thing from zero now next we divide into four equal segment I'll do the same thing Four equal segments we have from zero to two, and we take the midpoint, find the velocity, and then from two to four, take the midpoint, find the velocity that represent the horn interval. And velocity times time will give us the displacement, the total distance travel within that interval, and then we add them. So that's the idea, right? So instead of estimate the area under the curve, we just get the rectangles and approximate. In this case we use uh, the midpoint, uh, we can use the left point or the right point or any point in between. All right. I only do the first part because the rest we do the same thing. Just cut that in half and then. So I put them a bunch of sample like this knowing as the number of rectangles as the, as the number of sub interval increase the area of those rectangles add up together are very close to the area under the curve. So we could say approximating area under the curves is just by adding the areas of those rectangles together. The more rectangles, the better. So that's the idea of this section. All right. Now let's get to more technical. Now suppose we have an interval from A to B, from A to B and we'll divide this into n sub-interval. So from A to B, we divide that into n sub-interval. So the width or the length of an interval is equal to delta x equal to b minus a divided by n. So let's say we go from 0 to 8, divide into 2 interval. The length for one interval is 4. From 0 to 8, divide by 4 interval, the length for each one is 2. Right, so find uh, the endpoint, subtract the endpoints, and divide by the number of rectangles, the number of sub interval. Give us the length for one interval, and then the height uh, can be determined by any other point. Right, so uh, the point that we divide according to width point uh, x naught is equal to a and x n is equal to b, and then we have a bunch of sub interval. We form a bunch of rectangles right now and this sum is called the Raman sum suppose f is defined on the closed interval which is divided into n sub interval of equal length delta x if x k bar is any point in between so previously we used the midpoint exact midpoint but the, the idea of Raman sum we will choose any point within the interval in here, the first one, we choose this point, we choose that point to get the height. And here we choose look like the midpoint here, and here we choose the point there. So pretty much in each sub-interval, we will choose a point, and then we evaluate 
the values of the function to give us the height of the rectangle. So the height of the rectangle given by the values of the function at any point in between the subinterval. So this is x of k, x k, x of k bar, which is any point within an interval that we use to find the height of the rectangle. In that case, uh, the random sum can be using uh, the left uh, random sum, the, the right end, end point, the right end point, the mid point, or a lot of other options. So let's look at some example here. Uh, let R be the region bounded by the graph y equal to x cubed plus 2 and x, x and the x-axis between x equal to 0 and x equal to 2, approximating the area of R using the left random sum which for sub-interval. So, in this case, uh, it would be helpful if we kind of sketch and get the idea of the interval. So we go from 0 to 2, right? See from zero to two, and the function is x cubed plus two. From zero to two, if x is positive, x cubed plus two is positive. So we know the function is positive. Doesn't matter what it looks like. I just get the sketch. Let's see the function will look like this. Just get the idea of the function. It doesn't matter, right? Now, we go from 0 to 2. That's what the question has from 0 to 2. First part, n equal to 4. Now, if n is equal to 4, so we have the function. Like I said, this is not exactly x cubed plus 2, but just get the idea of some positive function. Now we approximate the area under the curve. So estimate the area under the curve, this area, from 0 to 2. Estimate this area. Right? Of course, this would be difficult if this is a curve. So to estimate that, we're using for sub-interval. So if n equal to 4, the first thing we do is find the width. That is the delta x, the width of one interval, is the end point, the difference of the end points, divided by the number of sub-interval. So in this case, we go from 0 to 2, so 2 minus 0, the length, divided by 4 sub-interval. So this equal to 0 0.5. So each interval, the width is 0 0.5, so we can divide this into four equal pieces of 0 0.5. So that we have 0 0.1, 1, 1.5, and 2. Right? Now, this we will use the left random sum. What that means is for each sub-interval, we will use the left point to find the height. So for the first rectangle from 0 to 0 0.5, from that interval, from this interval from 0 to 0 0.5, we use the left point, evaluate the function, and whatever it is, give us the height. So we're going to use this point to find the height of the rectangle. So that's the first interval. Second, from 0 0.5 to 1, we use the left point and find the height. That gives us the second rectangle. The second rectangle, we use the left end point to find the height. Next, from 1 to 1.5, we use the left point from 1 to 1.5, which is 1, the left point of that and we find the area of this rectangle. And finally, 
finally from 1.5 to 2 from 1.5 to 2 we use the left pawn to find the height of that rectangle add in the area of those four rectangles give us the estimated area under the curve y equal to x cubed plus 2 from 0 to 2 using four sub intervals so in this case just do one by one so for the first rectangle what we have the height is the values function on the left so it's going to be f of 0 which is the height the values of the function times the width delta x next this rectangle the height we base on the from 0 0.5 to 1 the height based on the left end point so we have f of 0 0.5 times the width of course we're going to add this together and then next one is this uh, from 1 to 1 1.5 we use the left point which is 1 evaluate the height of the function using the left point times delta x then we add that area and finally we will add the area here the values from 1.5 to 2 we use the left end point times the width right so the height will use the values of the function evaluate at the left point right since all of them have delta x uh, we can factor out the f of 0 f of 0 0.5 f of 1 f of 1.5 times delta x right of course we can do this by hand put 0 in the function put 0 0.5 here put 1 here put 1.5 here uh, I will use the calculator will be more convenient right first I will enter the point open parentheses so open parentheses to have 0 0 0.5 1 and 1 1.5 so I enter all the points that I need to evaluate right and we store this into this one easy right so we store all the values 0 0 0.5 1 1 1.5 now we just need to evaluate this the function is x cubed plus 2 so I'm going to have this one sorry this one cube plus 2 we have this values so that is the values of the function those are the height if you want to we can just write those numbers in 2 2.125 3 and 5.375 times delta x which is 0 0.5 yeah and we get the answer that will be the estimate the area under the curve y equal to x cubed plus 2 from 0 to 2 using 4 rectangles All right now if you have this and we can just add the list to add the list uh, we will hit stat sorry second stat second stat go to math option number five once again second stat go to math option number five and so we sum just go up highlight that and hit enter highlight the list and hit enter can we do that nope I guess we have to highlight this hit enter now that we do 
because if you cannot do that, don't worry. Then hit start, go to math, option number five, and then we use this one cube plus two, and then times the width of 0 0.5. We have 6.25. So estimate under the area under the curve is equal to 6.25. So that's what we do. Now do the same thing, but this time uh, using five sub interval and the right when one sum. So same thing. Just wrong. Uh, since I know it's divided by five sub intervals, so I just divide that in hand. So from zero to two. Yeah, in this section, the function is positive. So this, so we can just draw any function. Could be. So I just draw this in general. I say it go like this. Now we estimate the area under the curve from 0 to 2 below the function. The function is y equal to x cubed plus 2. Right. Now, from 0 to 2, first, uh, from 0 to 2, that has n sub interval, so we calculate the width. B minus A divided by N. Go from 0 to 2, divide into 5 sub interval. That gives us 0 0.4. So each sub interval, the width is 0 0.4. So we go from 0 to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 to 0 0.8, to 1.2, to 1.6, and to 2. So there are 5 sub interval. Now, for each Sub interval use the right random sum, so we don't even need to draw it. For the first sub interval, we use 0 0.4 and we find the height based on the right endpoint, and we have the rectangle. And then next, from 0 to 0 0.8, use the right end. Point, from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8, we use the right point, which is 0 0.8. Find the values, the height. And that gives us a rectangle. And then from 0 0.8 to 1.2, we use the right end point. Find the height. And have this rectangle. From 1.2 to 1.6, Use the right end point, find the height, and has that rectangle. Then from 1.6 to 2, use the right end point to have the height, and then we have the area. So notice that we evaluate at this point. The right end point, the right point of each of the sub interval. Right, so we just write that. So the area under the curve is estimated by the area, the sum of the area of those five rectangles. So we have 0 0.4 times the width as 0 0.8 times the width 1.2 times the width. 1.6 times the width and f of 2 times the width factor out delta x we have f of 0 0.4 f of 0 0.8 1.2 1 1.6 1 
and 2 times delta x. All right. I'll just use the calculator here. First, I will enter the points. Open the curly bracket. 0 0.4, comma, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, 2. Close the curly bracket. Store into a list. So we have that list of numbers. Next, uh, what we do, of course, is the function is x cubed plus 2. So it's cubed plus 2. You can add all those numbers up and then multiply by delta x of 0 0.4. But I will do even better. I will just add all this up using this function. Second stat. Go to math. Option number 5. We will add this one cube plus 2. So that we add up everything in the bracket times delta x of 0 0.4. And that gives us 9.76. Right, so simple enough. So the idea is we write that, uh, we can write the inside as the summation. And yeah, like just like the calculator, we do the list and add them up. The idea here is we will increase the number of rectangles. The more rectangle we have, the better the approximation. So if we can write that as a function, and when we take the limit of the number of rectangles, go to infinity, that would be very good. But that is the next section. Uh, what we focus now is the summation, because we will, we will add a lot of things. So we have to get used to the summation notation. So, summation notation. Uh, a few things we can do for summation is that we can take the constant outside and then we split the summation. Right. So the first two are important. Uh, the next one we can split the summation uh, from 1 to n, for example. This means, let's say if we have a series or the sum that go from 1 to 10 of something, we can do it from 1 to 5 first, and then we can go from 5, from 6 to 10. So those will be equivalent. All I need to do is bring this to the other side and then subtract. And that is essentially what we have here. Right, so that makes sense when we write an example. Now, this property, add all the constant, is going to be that. Add everything. Uh, the index we change from 1 to n. Now, if we add all of those index, uh, the formula is this. When k go to 1 to n, if we add on the square, so 1 square, 2 square, and on the weight to n square, the sum is this. If we add from 1 uh, to n, k cube is going to be that. Right, we're not going to prove it. Just need to know how to use it. Right, first, uh, find the sum up to from 1 to 20. Now, that is the first one where we have the constant, right? So, this is easy. So this is equal to 2, that constant, times the upper limit, 20. So that is equal to 40. Because if you're using this calculator, uh, by this I mean TI-84, uh, with the newest operation system, hit math and go all the way to option number 0. We can say we add from 1 to 20, 2. That's what we have, right? Next, uh, we're going to add from 1 to 50 at the index k. So in that case, we're going to use that formula. It's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2, where n is the upper limit. So we have 50. Um, 50 plus 1 
divide by 2. Uh, 50 and 2, that's 26. 26 times 51 is 1326. Of course, we, if we do the math summation, x go from 1 to 50 of x. It's 25 times 51, sorry. Yeah. It is 12.75. Right? So, summation of 1 to 50 of k Meaning we're going to put k in 1 into k and then go to 2, substitute for k, go to 3, substitute for k, and go to 50, substitute to k. Add off number should have 1275. All right, next, how about this? In order to do this, we use the properties of the summation. We can first split them. can split them. Next, we can take the constant outside. That formulas. The sum of all the square, the sum of all the square is going to be the upper limit, the upper number, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Uh, so the first one is going to be all of this. We will take the upper limit, upper number 50, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6 next minus 5 the sum of everything of the k uh, we did that that is 1275 but if we want to write the formula it's going to be the upper number 50 times 50 plus 1 divide by 2. Yeah, so this is the sum of everything in the first power. And then the last one is the constant. So the just take will be 3 times that constant. Yeah, just do the math. I uh, should get the numbers. So we'll do this by hand uh, first. So that let's see. 50 times 51 times uh, that is 101 divided by 6 that is 42,925 next we have 5 times 50 times 51 divided by 2 63.75 and then that is 150 so this number subtract this number plus 150 36,700 now let's just find that to see if it works 
math option zero uh, index go from one to fifty we have x square the index square minus five times that index uh, plus three yeah that should be the same So if we want to do it by hand, we have to know the formula for the sum of everything in the first degree, second degree, and third degree. And then we can just split them up and do that. We can evaluate the sum of a polynomial. Now, to get uh, the more systematic way, remember the way we define, um, we have an interval. from A to B divide to N sub interval. The first point uh, we let equal to X naught. The last point we will let equal to X sub N. With that, we divide into a bunch of rectangles. As uh, before, the same as before, the width is equal to B minus A over N. And for each one, the width of one rectangle is delta x. So if we use the left point, uh, the sample point will be a plus k minus 1 times delta x. So if it is the left Raman sum, it's easy though. We start with when k equal to 1, we have 1 minus 1 which is 0 times a, uh, plus a, so it's a, so the when k equal to 1 the first point is we use x, uh, use a now, if we want to use the right random sum we're going to use this one so, in that case if we put 1 in for k put 1 in for k, the first point is going to be this, a plus delta x, for the first interval. For the second interval, it's going to be a plus 2 delta x, right? So if we use the right end point now, we only write that for the right end point. For the first interval, we have a plus delta x, so this is x1 bar, which is the sample point for the first interval. This is, has the bar, so that's different than the one without the bar. Next, for this point to that point, you'll be confusing. Let me write this out again. So we have x0, x1, x2, x3, and so on to xn. Now, if we used the left, if we used the right end point, so from zero, uh, for the first interval, we use the right end point, which is a plus one times delta x. So the first rectangle, we use this point. The second rectangle, we use a plus two times delta x, which is x two. Yeah. So bottom line is, if we use the left random sum, right random sum, and the midpoint, that's it. It's of the formula just like that. Now, let's do this for a uh, more systematic, the big problem. Uh, evaluate the right random sum, so we use the right uh, random sum here. This one, the right random sum, and from 0 to 2, and equal to 50. So first thing we do is the width. which is delta x. Delta x is b minus a over n in our problem. 2 minus 0 divided by 50, so 0 0.04. 0 
So that's the width. Next, the sample point. And we use the right end point. According to uh, the random sum, the term, when we use the right, it's going to be x of k is equal to a plus k times delta x. So let's just write out. If we use the right random sum, it's going to be x k bar equal to the right is going to be a plus k delta x. In our particular, a is equal to 0, k is k, delta x is 0 0.04. That is x of k, x bar of k. Wait, that is 0 0.04k. Yeah. Which is that? This is the point, the sample point, the, the point that we use to calculate uh, the height. So we use those points to find the height. And finally, the random sum we can write as the summation. We use 50 rectangles, so we go from 0 to 50. The function at the sample point times delta x. That is exactly what we have here. So the the function at those sample points gives us the height times the width. So put all the numbers together. K equal to 1 to 50. Uh, f of xk. xk bar is this. The function is x squared plus 1. So we will have 0 0.04 k. That is for square plus 1 times delta x 0 0.04. Right, now we focus on that. Uh, 0 0.04 square. That one square zero 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 point zero zero sixteen k square plus one times zero point zero four multiplied out so zero point zero zero sixteen times 0 0.04 uh, that is 0 0.000 point zero 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 six four I miss a zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's it. K square and multiply that out zero point zero four. Right? And what's here we can split and factor out a 0 0.0064 k square right and 1 to 50 x square we actually did that right from 1 to 50 for x square that is 42 925 the sum of k square from 1 to 50 so we will have that number 
pronoun or space, so we we'll just have that number. Better yet, we have that number times 1 to 50 k square going to be that number. 4, 2, 9, 2, 5. Right. And then plus. This is easy. This is easy. You put your 4 times 50 because the sum of constant. And we have 4.7472. Right? So we write that as a sum of all the square and then we use the formula which we did earlier. Of course, how about we enter that in the calculator? And that times zero point zero four. So we get the same thing. Sorry about that. It is the notification. All right. So the same thing, right? All right. Next, uh, we'll do a similar thing. Evaluate the left random sum. This time, it's going to be a left random sum, and we use the function from eight from zero to five. 50 rectangles. So first, let's find the width. B minus zero divided by 100. So point zero five. Sorry, 0 0.02. Yep, 0 0.05, sorry. That's good. Right. What thing we need to can we got the calculator. Right, this is the left. So the sample pawn. If we use the left. In that term, if the left and pawn, we're gonna use this one, the sample pawn is equal to a plus k minus 1 times delta x. Right, so that's what we have. Right? So, in our particular problem, x, k, bar, a is 0, k minus 1, delta x, 0 0.05 so x k bar equal to k minus 1 times 0 0.05 or if we multiply it out 0 0.05 k minus 0 0.05 so that is the sample point next the Raman sum The values of the function that those sample point times delta x. The function is 2x plus 3. 2 times x is going to be this. Plus three, right? Yeah. This substitute into x times the width of zero point zero five. Right. Multiply this out. And so we have two times zero point zero five, that is zero point one times k. Right? minus 0 0.1 times 
plus 3 times 0 0.05. Multiply it out. Zero point one times zero point zero five is zero point one two three. And zero point one negative zero point one plus three times zero point zero five. That one point four point zero point one four five, and then here we can split I should just factor out the zero point zero five, yeah, but we can do that later. I factor out the 0 0.05 times 0.05k from 1 to 50 of k plus k from 1 to 50 of 0 0.145 so that gives us 0 0.005 uh, sum of everything from 1 to 50 on the index from 1 to 50 that is equal to 50 times 50 plus 1 divided by 2 so that's why we need to know the formulas of the summation and then this is the sum of all the constant the sum of all the constant so upon 145 times 50 right you all that 0 0.0.0 .0, 0, 0. 5 times 50 times 51 divided by 2 plus 0 0.145 times 50 13.625 right now let's just try to put that in originally see what happened sorry math option zero go from one to fifty All right two times zero point zero five x minus zero point zero five plus 3 times 0 0.05 yeah so it doesn't matter so we first we need to know the width and then we write out uh, the left point the formula we're going to use that the right point we're going to use that of course the midpoint it's going to be that and then we we'll just put in the values of the function. Put in the function to find the values. This gives us the height times the width. Give us the area of rectangles. Add the area of all those rectangles. We have the random sum. Or the, uh, in this case, we estimate the area under the curve. Right. The idea here is we can use the number of rectangles. Uh, if we take the number, number of rectangles, we go to infinity. Or we set delta x. The width of the interval goes to zero. If we have infinitely number of rectangles, the area under the curve is no longer approximation. If we take the number of rectangles goes to infinity, we actually calculate the area under the curve. But that is the next section. That's all we have for this section. As always, thank you for watching and see you in another video in Calculus 1.